think today um, based upon uh, improving dorsiflexion from working on the fibular head and the calf. Uh, patient today uh, actually accidentally stepped in a deep fryer several years ago and after he peeled off his shoe and his sock he, he took off um, his skin as well so he has some skin grafts and he has some very limited dorsiflexion. Um, better than you thought though. It is a little bit better than zero. So, yeah, that's better than I thought. <laughs> yes, it is better than you thought. So, orthokinematically, uh, as a review, the fibular head needs to glide anterior laterally in either open and closed chain dorsiflexion. I can just feel even with slight dorsiflexion, it's slightly gliding anterior laterally. So, uh, the traditional mobilization is, is just stabilizing the tibia and pulling the fibular head anteriorly, which I do very little of. Um, so, to assess with the edge tool, you're going to want to lubricate the area pretty well. And as it's a, a bonier contour, you can use either the smallest or the second smallest convexity on the sharpest side to assess around the bony contours. So any kind of posterior adhesions would prevent it from gliding anteriorly, as well as even anterior uh, adhesions, just from uh, tissue folding. So not really detecting a whole lot anteriorly, but posteriorly there is. So I would proceed to progress in depth after I clear the superficial restrictions by flipping over the edge to the flatter side. So actually, let me flip over on your belly too. So I'm also working around the entire area, not just around the fibular head, anywhere where I'd, where I'd find and scan. I can, it's a lot easier to get it from this angle. So I'm always working in the same direction, in this case would be a distant proximal direction. You do have to be careful around this area as well, even when you are doing traditional mobilizations, as you may... Uh, hit the peroneal or fibular nerve. Common pattern around this area is a large oval shaped restriction, which is why I had them flip over and prone. I wasn't finding too much around the fibular head. So if it's an area about this large and you can scan distal to proximal approximate to distal, a little bit more restriction in that direction, so. We work in this direction. Until that smooths out, then flipping over to progress in depth. <laughs> now before we get to the move with movement, even though this is not as long as treatment as I would, I would have done more around the fibular head and a bit more in this area. Probably about uh, 10 minutes in total at most for this small area, um, combining both treatment areas. Let's remeasure his dorsiflexion. I'm not sure if that's going to do too much. Um, go ahead and land your back again. Actually, the end feels a bit better, and uh, you might have about five now. So it, it is a little bit better. Um, and I wouldn't normally have a patient up on the table, but just for the purposes of filming, let's get you in a half kneel on the table, okay? Um, just like forward. 
So far. All right, you can already tell his door reflection is limited because he evert so much. So let's put him in a bit better of a position. Now, so I'm going to do two things. Mobilizing hand is going to be posterior to your fibular head. I'm going to grasp out two fingers. Is that tender at all? Yep. Is it? Oh, yeah. Is it, is it accessibly tender? Because like nerve tender? Oh, no, no. It's okay. But just not uncomfortable. Felt like it was okay? Oh, yeah. It goes right back. Right. No, no, that's your take. Okay. So uh, my assisting hand is actually going to make sure that uh, well, I'm going to just track the tibia um, and thus the, the patella properly. Because when he, when he goes into dorsi, close shade dorsiflexion, I want him to go in a straight line over the second toe. So uh, I'm just helping track that and, and do a slight tail roll move here as well. So I'm going to just use my fingers and squeeze like that to pull the fibular head anteriorly. Painful? It's okay? Mm -hmm. No, I'm, I'm okay. I feel it though. Yeah. This is not a mulligan technique, so the rules of 100% pain free for the mobilization with movement uh, do not necessarily apply. Uh, I find that this is a bit more functional than just an implementation. Yeah. And it's more comfortable for you, isn't it? It, it is. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, just for the purposes of this technique, I know we need to, to work a lot more on your tailor curl and uh, some tailor joints, but I just wanted to see if this would improve the dorsiflexion. The more we do it, the less painful it gets. Okay. And he's not just saying that for the movie, folks. Okay, let's remeasure. Go ahead. So I'll do uh, maybe two, three sets of ten of that. And you can do that in a squat. You can do that up a step, down a step. And actually, that, that's, again, a bit better. Um, end feel is definitely changed. And if I really passively load that, I can probably get into even about almost ten. So... Pretty good for walking at this point. Much better. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So those are the two techniques.